We sometimes hear the sound of pages turning or the crinkle of paper in an artist's book. But what about actual music? When You Hear This Sound by Keg de Souza and Ulu Haema Lama, Legacies of Lili Uokalani by Alison Leialoha Milham, both contain records with their artist books. Connecting music and books, they highlight the stories of unique people and histories of specific places. Keg de Souza is an Australian artist whose expansive interdisciplinary practice crosses into artist books, zines, food, film, and site-specific installations. Her work regularly examines issues of community and the politics of space. After making numerous zines about different places she had visited, she wanted to focus when you hear this sound closer to home. D'Souza lives on the unceded Gadigal land in Sydney, in a neighborhood called Redfern. She explained to me that this area has a complex history as an important meeting place for Aboriginal people, as well as housing a large working class population because of its proximity to the city and rail yards. Through a series of wry and humorous vignettes, she depicts a variety of observations in her neighborhood. Many of the stories note little details that indicate change and coming gentrification. Others, like this one about finding an empty Viagra package in their letterbox, give a sense of the current variety of businesses and services around. The rubber stamp lettering and unpretentious illustrations lend an immediacy to each story, while simultaneously making me feel connected to D'Souza's background with zine making. Designed as a singing book, when you hear this sound recalls book and record sets that children could listen to and read along. To assist early readers, the recordings have specific chimes indicating it is time to turn the page. The chime for this book <whistles> sets a tenor for the neighborhood. Every story has an accompanying song. D'Souza had long been fascinated by song poem services. Particularly popular in the 1950s, aspiring songwriters would send their lyrics to companies that would then set them to music and send them back on a 7-inch record. D'Souza connected with the Utah-based song poem artist David Fox at Magic Key Records, who set her observations to music. The individual songs cross a broad range of styles, and they add extra punch to the humor. Let's play a full song. KFC versus GFC. We were confused by the giant posters. The supermarket had stuck up advertising barbecue chicken saying, Why pay $10 when you could pay $9.88? When You Hear This Sound is easily enjoyed without the audio component, but the songs really complete the magic. D'Souza told me that these book and record sets hold fond memories of deep listening for her. I can see the connection between the deep listening and the deep looking that D'Souza was doing in her neighborhood. Some of my favorite stories are ones where she or her partner realized something to be other than they had originally thought. Like this one, where she explains to her partner that the building he thought was a pub is actually an elder care community facility. D'Souza told me that reflecting back on When You Hear This Sound 10 years after it was published, she felt nostalgia and heartbreak. As gentrification continues and the focus becomes more on real estate value than housing, many of these businesses and local characters have been pushed out of the neighborhood. We are all the more fortunate then that When You Hear This Sound captures the energies, oddities, and snippets of life that create the unique personality of a neighborhood. Alison Leia Loha Milham is a book artist, musician, 
and the proprietor of Morning Hour Press. Throughout her work, she aims to give voice to unsung heroes and untold stories. Equal Parts Artist Book, Deluxe Record Box Set, and Activist Toolkit, Uluhaya Malama Legacies of Lili Uokalani is a multi-layered introduction to the lesser-known political history of the occupied state of Hawaii. Hawaii became the 50th state in the U.S. in 1959, 60 years after the overthrow of the nation's last monarch, Queen Lili Uokalani. Statehood has not been universally embraced. For many Native Hawaiians, it is an enduring legacy of American imperialism, militarism, and colonization in the Pacific region. Enclosed in this box set are a record, lyric sheet, stencil, postcards, lay kit, and pamphlet. Milham, who is of Native Hawaiian descent, designed this variety of elements to provide different entry points and engagement with Hawaii's political past and history of resistance. The introduction explains that the title, Uluhaya Malama, is named after the garden created by the Queen in 1894. The garden is one of the Queen's many works that has inspired more than a century of activism and resistance. A symbol of hope for Native Hawaiians, the hidden meaning of the name is as the plants grow up out of the dark earth into the light, so shall light come to the nation. The record features a selection from more than 200 compositions written by Queen Lili Uokalani that Milham performs in both traditional and contemporary styles. Many of these songs were written while the Queen was imprisoned by the provisional government that overthrew the monarchy. The words to some songs, like Umia ke Aloha i Paa i Loko, contain secret messages to her people, encouraging hope and continued persistence in the face of the political turmoil. On some songs, like Kawaii Mapuna, Milhem combined her own compositions with the Queen's words. These songs reinforce Milhem's desire to create connections between the past and the present. The stencil features an image of Queen Lili Uokalani. Her body language and expression exude resilience and strength. This Hawaiian word, onipa'a, means to remain steadfast. Milhem notes on the back that she created this to honor the Queen's legacy and it is meant to be used in a location where others might find it as an encouraging reminder to stand firm in what is right. The title of the booklet, Uncovering Hawaii's Past, Beyond Textbooks and Travel Guides, clearly states what is to come. Written in collaboration with Milham's mother, it is a very accessible primer that digests the complicated history and contemporary struggles for Native Hawaiian culture and independence. Milham describes exploring the contents of Uluhaya Malama Legacies of Lili Uokalani as an interactive uncovering, an intense discovery of successive layers to be sifted through, understood, and felt. My experience reflected this intense discovery. After reading the booklet and moving back to the other items, the layers and details struck even deeper. For example, this envelope contains a lay making kit to provide the reader a tactile experience of making. The significance of 49 flowers? Hawaii was taken as the 50th state of the union. Milham designed this pattern found on the paper flowers and other items in the box from signatures on the Ku'e anti-annexation petitions of 1897. 
She introduces the petitions below the envelope, but we really understand what absolute opposition means in the booklet. 38,000 individuals from a total population of 40,000 Native Hawaiians signed the petition to restore the Queen and oppose annexation by the U.S. That is a remarkably overwhelming majority. Colonialism and militarism faced by Native Hawaiians are not just a thing of the past. These postcards offer a fierce counterpoint to typical tourist marketing. Milham explained to me that the vast majority of tourists have absolutely no awareness of the fact that Hawaiians never relinquished their sovereignty. The extractive tourism industry, a dominant force in the local economy, is based heavily on consumption, with little reciprocation with locals or regard for the ongoing struggles faced by Native Hawaiians. On the back of the card, Recipients are provided resources for the real truth about Hawaii. Milham recognized that the deluxe version of this book would most likely live in special collections and museums like ours. But such institutions, with a responsibility to the longevity of these objects, are unlikely to use the tools she supplied. To counteract the scarcity and increase access to the contents and tools, Milham made most of the pieces available separately, sometimes even free. Activists are using the tools. The Protect Mauna Kea movement has used the stencil on signs and jackets, and she's noticed the sticker posted around. Uluhaya Malama, Legacies of Lili Uokalani, is a beautiful and densely layered testament to Queen Lili Uokalani's enduring impacts and legacy. Milham's book lights a fire, encouraging activism in the face of the colonialism and militarism that continue to wreak havoc on Hawaii's indigenous lands, waters, and communities. The recordings included with When You Hear This Sound and Uluhaya Malama, Legacies of Lili Uokalani, offer musical experiences that heighten our interaction with these books. Taken together, they draw our attention to the value of understanding community and place, and the importance of resisting the forces of gentrification and colonialism.